Greetings, friends. Welcome to Black Metal and Brews. You can tell by my backdrop that tonight we're going to talk about some concerts. And we're going to drink some beer. And we got two big concerts to talk about. So, we're going to have a big beer. Uh, for reference, I mean, this is the entirety of these things, and this is my head. Um, we're going to have the Polliner Oktoberfest in the cup it came with. Uh, I'm a little intimidated by this task, but I have faith in my capacities as a professional drinker. And by that I mean sometimes I make money, which qualifies this as a profession. According to the lid, I can get a cash refund in California, so California, I'll be seeing you soon. Tonight, we're going to talk about two awesome concerts I went to. Uh, one featuring some established names in black metal. One featuring artists who I think will be established in due time. And uh, it's kind of nice to see both, you know, the success and the up and coming. And uh, part of me is already filled with regret at pouring this for myself. But part of me is kind of excited because I deserve it. Uh, I mean, if you're ever uncertain if you deserve to have a nice beer right now, the answer is that you do. Uh, as long as you haven't had like eight beers already. Be safe, be smart, don't hurt yourself or fall into a pattern of addiction. That's from, that's a topic for another video though. Feel like you deserve a beer? Have one. Have a huge ass beer. Uh, or have a little beer. I usually don't go for big beers. Uh, this is like 7%, 6% alcohol, so it's not going to defeat me. Uh, not that this is a battle between me and the beer, it should be a symbiotic, a friendship. But anyway, time is of the essence, and I'm not good at that. So, uh, show one. House show uh, that I attended a week ago-ish? Uh, yeah, a week ago, just under. I had the privilege of seeing a, a few incredible uh, artists. Opening the show was Mystics in Bali, uh, electronic experimental act with visualizations to accompany his set. Fantastic! Uh, I'm always a sucker for electronic music and noise, and especially when paired with heavy metal artists. I, th I think they're very complimentary in their bold and uh, exploratory nature. He said, uh, if, if the little .mp4 file for his projections was to be uh, conceived as the song title, it was The Reliquary. Uh, very uh, interesting mix of like hymnal music and uh, you know weird, fucked up, crumbling noise, occasional like percussive beats. Very uh, gorgeous ambience, often distorted and to the point where it became no longer gorgeous, but horrifying. Really fun, uh, by my standard of fun. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, following was Nefaria, who have been around for a while in my little periphery. I think I first heard of them when I got one of their tapes from uh, Dungeon Tapes, which is, I finally finished pouring my beer, an excellent... A uh, little cassette label if you are ever in the market for some good, raw, filthy, just shit quality recording on purpose kind of black metal that still gets a sense of melody, or maybe doesn't, or some good dungeon synth. Check out Dungeon Tapes. Uh, I believe it was Nefaria doing a split with... I feel like I'm going to get it wrong. I got a lot of tapes from them. Maybe Zygmuth Copt was the one. Not sure. But Nefaria's killer. Seeing them live was really cool. It was just uh, drums and guitar. Uh, very epic, cold black metal, uh, and not epic like we're talking Vindir standing on top of a mountain, but just very just majestic but aggressively conceived. Uh, great time, and this is all taking place in the basement here in Portland. Obviously the dress will never be disclosed because uh, my goal is not to get good house shows shut down. Uh, but that was fantastic, had a real joy with that. Um, afterward, uh, Artist Bill Rubin played, and I've had Bill Rubin's uh, cassette for a while. I first heard about it uh, through the Metallic Imagery blog, which, if you're not familiar and you like to get rips of rare tapes, it's a great source. Tom almost always has clearance from the artist. It, it's a good thing. Uh, but Bill Rubin just tore me to pieces. They opened with their song Antique Marvel, which is one of my favorites of theirs. Uh, just very punk paced, uh, kind of tinny guitars, shrill vocals, but 
very interesting angular riffs, uh, really, really fun performance, and, uh, you know, I kind of like that it's still oddly sloppy for something so uh, bizarrely structured. Uh, really good, fun time, perfect for the environment, perfect for, you know, I had a couple drinks. Really, really enjoyable. Mm, first sip here. Oh boy, it's kind of sweet and weedy. Uh, big Oktoberfest flavor. It was apparently the top selling Oktoberfest in Germany. Oh, hey, sweet pea. You can see the cat was thinking about coming over, but apparently petting her doesn't really serve so well. Anyway, uh, after that, uh, Utzalu played, and it was actually their first gig. Utzalu is one of the acts on the Vrasa Batlat label that you've seen me uh, premiere some things from, uh, whether it's Uskungalu or Serum Drag. Uh, good label. Uh, Utzalu put on a great show. Very uh, primitive, punk-paced, black filth, uh, I believe they only played three songs, the last of which devolved into feedback, noise, and chanting, uh, while the drums and bass continued to batter on. Absolutely valiant, for lack of a better word, victorious performance, uh, from an artist that, I mean, for a first gig, they played like they had been established as a headliner rather than just the band that happened to play last at a house show. Uh, basically, amazing show. Any one of those acts could have easily been in a prominent billing position on, on a gig at a you know, uh, brick and mortar venue, and I would have paid money to get in. It was fantastic. Uh, I highly urge you to pursue all of these acts in some way if you have the capacity. Uh, which leads us to the next gig I attended, uh, just this Tuesday night, November 17th, at the Panic Room here in Portland. Uh, I had the good fortune of seeing some very established acts, uh, along with some that were just getting their start. Jeez, this isn't really practical drinking wear, but, uh, sure is fun. My cat is sitting on top of the printer and has turned it on. I will be... I'm just going to leave this thing running. This is ridiculous. Honey. There we go. Oh. I told her it's too late to start doing her paperwork now. She should have got an early start on it. Uh, anyway, at the Panic Room, I got to see Magua with a lot of other bands opening. And I know that I'm not pronouncing their name properly, nor is pretty much anybody who grew up speaking American English, so hell with it. I'm going to do my best. Uh, opening the show, Local Act Demonis Ed Noctum. Uh, I believe that a member of that band or the label associated with them uh, booked the show. I'm not entirely certain. What I can say is that it was their second gig ever, uh, which that's a lot of pressure. Uh, the show did sell out uh, at the door, not, not in advance. Um, but nonetheless, they put on a consistent, aggressive, compelling set. People were, you know, not along. It was, when, when I found out it was their second set, I, I was truly surprised. And their first one, I believe, they said was with Bolzer, uh, which I did not catch when they came through as, uh, I think I worked at like 6 the next morning or something ridiculous. But really solid set. Uh, spoke with their, with their singer after the set. Very nice fella. Got a tape. Uh, if I can ever catch up on all the stuff I back on, maybe I'll review it. Jeez. I don't even know what she's set into motion there, but this thing is just printing of its own accord. She's sitting next to the camera here. Um, anyway, following them was the band Death Stench. Uh, as a disclaimer, I've already done a lot of work with Death Stench. If you've seen some of their song premieres on my website if you follow the printed part of my site. Um, they did put me on the guest list for the show because we've worked together a lot. So, even though, you know, I'm a fan, there's a bias there. We've worked together. With that out of the way, it's not like I'm getting paid for this. Uh, Death Stench had uh, two monsters of men uh, guesting with them. They had uh, the mighty Alan Dubin of Kanate, Kanate, however you say it, uh, and Old Lady Drivers, and Na, most recently, uh, performing vocals with them, as he did on their split with Trevor Nairings or Chihuahuan. And they also had... Uh, the engineer himself, Billy Anderson, uh, doing some vocals and noise work uh, 
along with the core trio that is Death Stench of uh, John, Dara, and Eric. Uh, it was a magnificent set, uh, equal parts improvisation and well-calculated chaos. Um, really just... Uh, it was clear that their control of atmosphere was a dominant aspect of their set. Uh, the dynamic of the slow build, the inevitable collapse, was displayed to great effect, and it's one of the things that endears me to a lot of artists who take noise and filter it through their metal. Uh, I feel that in terms of black noise, Death Stench are one of the most compelling acts doing that right now, uh, which is why I've elected to work with them as extensively as I have. Uh, being up front for that, seeing the the fellows they were performing with just destroying on vocals it was a really intense dynamic uh the pacing of the song i you know i had expected perhaps it'd be a little more black metal or perhaps even more just freeform but it was this oddly uh ever unwinding build up m much like early swans material but with a far different vocal structure and a lot more layers of destruction in there um, I've been waiting for a while to meet those folks to witness their performance. They delivered, and then some. Uh, you know, for fear of appearing like I'm gushing, I'll leave it at that, but, uh, I'm really hopeful that, uh, they will get together and do more gigging, more touring, uh, with folks here in Portland, Los Angeles, and with Alan Dubin living in New Jersey. It's hard to say, uh, how much of them we'll be seeing. But I'm re going to remain optimistic, because they seem to have a really good time, and, uh, you know, I think that they could really bring out a good crowd and have a great time. Uh, next up uh, was the touring package, arranged by Vinny at Signature Riff, uh, and uh, it ha featured uh, an act who happens to be from here in Portland, but they're not on the... On the they weren't on the bill because of that, they were just part of the tour. Uh, Sempiternal Dusk. One of my favorite local Death Doom acts, uh, their uh, debut record uh, from Dark Descent was absolutely crushing, uh, ridiculously heavy. Um, they sounded fantastic. They played a uh, slightly more cut-to-the-point aggressive set than I initially expected, which was actually really fitting for the environment. Bear with me. Uh, it's a little cold here, and I'm ugh, shivery. But uh, they delivered in every way. It was tight, concise, uh, just absolutely crippling death metal with doom vibes, or doom metal with death vibes. But I'm going much more on the death metal side, especially considering the uh, intensity and sincerity of their performance. Uh, I don't know how I've skipped enough of the, as many of their shows as I have. Sorry, I'm using the illumination of my laptop screen right behind this to film. Uh, but I'm really glad I had the good fortune of catching them. Uh, and given that they're a local man, I hope I'm seeing them again soon. Because uh, I definitely, by that point, it was the middle of the night. You know, not the middle of the night, but the middle of the show. They were the middle act. And I was already starting to get tired because some part of me is way older than the 28 years I put in on this planet. Uh, following them was Weregoat. Uh, a band who are filthy, primitive, uh... You know, I, I'd go with Primal, but I feel like Primitive may be the better descriptor. Uh, I, w I wasn't as sure what to expect from them. I'd heard some of the recordings, um, and I was, I was pleasantly surprised. It's not that I didn't expect to enjoy it so much as that I didn't... I just didn't know what I was going to be in for as much. And uh, Wergo delivered a pretty solid set. Had a really good time watching them. But I'll admit that by that point in the night, I was kind of cooling off, trying to just wait it out for Magua. Uh, Panic Room, like a lot of venues that have to deal with a high volume of people and artists, shows don't always run on time there. By that point, the show was running almost an hour behind, uh, and I'm old, I'm sleepy at heart. Uh, well, old at heart, sleepy in actuality. So I'll admit, I took it easy for a bit, and uh, they got comfy little couches in a lounge area, and I did watch part of that set from the couch, because uh, sometimes you've just got to admit uh, defeat. Uh, a friend fed me some french fries, which was very kind, and uh, I relaxed a bit, but I did get to hear and enjoy their set. Uh, I'm really hoping that the next time I catch them it'll be on a bill that either is shorter, smaller, or perhaps at a better time of day for my body. I'd love if every show went from like 7 to 11 instead of like 9.30 to 
fucking one in the morning. Uh, Migwa went on at 12.30, uh, a full hour after I thought they would, which is not a complaint so much as a, like, I found myself absolutely me mesmerized by the fact that my energy just came back the second they started. Their presence is so commanding. I've enjoyed their music on record for quite some time, and it seems that uh, their newest release, Exercises in Futility, has garnered even more attention for them than I'd imagined. I thought they were just kind of one of those bands I loved that other black metal nerds on the internet loved. I found a lot of time when I think something is the biggest band on earth or whatever, they're really not that big of a deal to the broader spectrum of people, and I'm just really into my niche. Uh, as it turns out, you could barely move. I felt it when it first started, like I wasn't even able to breathe. There were so many people, which was really cool to see. Uh, everybody was so into it. They played stuff from most of their career, and they played so tightly. I felt as though I could have watched them play for an hour longer than they did, and still totally lost myself in it. They played a little bit from each era of their career. Uh, they didn't do that thing where they either ignore or feature exclusively from their new album. It was a diverse and beautiful set. Uh, their sound translated so well live, even with my little earplugs in. Uh, it looked like there was like a bit of a mosh pit for a little bit, but from what I saw, it wasn't so much people pushing and punching as it was just everybody leaning and swaying in unison, and it was just this really together sort of feeling. Uh, I think everybody was just so excited and exhilarated that it didn't matter how tired we were, because I was exhausted. It didn't matter how many beers we'd had or not. It was just magnificent. Uh, and I feel, again, that I'm perhaps fanboying a little hard here. Uh, but it was just one of those things where I felt so much more with it than I would have. I'm usually past midnight. I'm not conscious. Uh, the fact that I was able to hold this together through an entire set and think, oh man, that's over. I really hope they play an encore. And they didn't. They just... Which was actually really cool. Again, it's kind of part of that, I'll say, just no image, no fucking around thing they've got. It's just like, no, this is here, this is what you get, and it's going to be awesome, and you're going to enjoy it. Uh, they absolutely tore the place to fucking shreds. Uh, I can only hope that I'll have a chance to see them again soon, because it was good beyond words. Um, again, thanks to Death Stench for ensuring that I'd get to see the show. Thanks to Vinny and Signature Riff for putting on the tour. Thanks to Panic Room for hosting. Thanks to, gosh, local label Head Split, I believe, for helping arrange the show locally. And, uh, you know, thank you for watching this. This video is uh, probably nearing the 20 minute mark or something. And uh, you've stuck through. But, but it's almost over. I'm just going to tell you a little more about this beer. It's tasty. I think I got this whole set for like 12, 15 bucks. Perhaps you'd like it. It's certainly not the best Oktoberfest beer I've had, but I've had far worse. Polliner does a fine job making this beer, especially considering the broad scope of their, their uh, arrangement, spectrum, work. I don't know. I barely even started sipping. I'm certainly not drunk, but words elude me at this point. Um, I'm definitely self-conscious about how long this has been. Thanks for sticking in there. Uh, anyway, black metal rules. Beer rules. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. I've got even more things to talk about with you soon. I'm doing my best to get this out there as quickly as I can. Uh, I love you. All of you. You're amazing. You're here for the same reasons I'm here. And uh, especially watching Magua and going to that little house show, I'm starting to see that sense of community. People are talking to me more. I'm getting to talk to people more. And we're all just so excited about music. And not beer so much. I, I am, but, you know, it's been really great connecting with people out there. It's been great seeing so many friends at these shows. I feel like pretty half the people or more that I like in Portland turned out to the Magua show. And it was great to see you all. Uh, I hope I'll see you all again soon. There's only a million good shows happening in this city. Anyways, this is Black Metal and Brews. I'm Ben. I'll be seeing you very soon.